Hi guys and welcome to another Mr Pollock biology video. In this video we're going to be looking at transporting plants still and this time it's transpiration. This is for AS level unit 2 students studying the AQA spec. Our objectives today, we're going to understand what is meant by this thing transpiration. We're going to explain how certain environmental factors can affect the rate of transpiration. We're going to look at special organisms called xerophytes and look at how they're well adapted to certain types of conditions. And we're going to understand how to measure the rate of transpiration using a potometer. Now, probably the best place to start would be to re-watch this video here. Now, this starts to talk a little bit about transpiration and how it influences the movement of water up the xylem. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and click the picture just here to take you to my transport up the xylem video. And once you've done that, we can crack on. So what is transpiration? Well, transpiration is the evaporation of water from the leaves. And this occurs by the tiny pores on the underside of a leaf called stomata. And transpiration is vitally important because it drives the movement up the water, oh, sorry, the movement of water up the xylem uh, by cohesion tension theory. And it also aids the movement of water into the roots itself. That's all explained in my previous video that you really should check out if you haven't already done so. But what factors can affect the rate of transpiration? Well, there's a clue there on the left-hand side. First one is temperature. So as temperature increases, the rate of transpiration also increases. The reason behind this is because as we increase the temperature, we give water molecules more kinetic energy, and that means they can evaporate from the leaves more readily. Another factor affecting transpiration is humidity, which is measured by a hygrometer, which we've got on the right here. Now, this is different because as humidity increases, transpiration decreases. So what is humidity? Well, humidity is how saturated the air is with water. The higher th the humidity, the more water is being held in the air. Now, humid air lowers the concentration difference or the concentration gradient between the leaves where transpiration is going to occur from and the environment. So if there's a less concentration gradient, less evaporation and therefore less transpiration will be happening. The third factor that can affect the rate of transpiration is the wind, the speed of the wind. And this is linked to humidity. So as wind speed increases, transpiration rate increases. And the reasoning behind this is that wind is moving humid air away from the leaves, which effectively increases the concentration gradient, as we talked about in the previous slide. The fourth factor is sunlight, or light intensity. So as light intensity increases, transpiration rate increases. And the reasoning behind this is light stimulates the opening of stomata. So we get more, more transpiration occurring during the day. And transpiration rate will increase up to midday and then start to decrease as we get less light. Let's talk about these guys. Xerophytes are organisms that are really, really well adapted to live in arid conditions. That's really dry conditions. So xerophytes have particular adaptations or changes, structural and physiological adaptations that allow them to survive in these conditions. And it's all about minimizing water loss or increasing the ability to absorb and store water. So we can see adaptations in stomata. Now xerophytes will have fewer stomata and they're sunken into pits with hairs. If we've got less stomata, that means less transpiration is going to occur. And the pits and the hairs, they trap regions of relatively high humidity. So they're trapping moist air close to the stomata, and that's going to reduce the concentration gradient between the leaves and the environment. So less transpiration will occur. The leaves themselves also show some interesting adaptations. Xerophytes often have small leaves or rolled leaves or spines. And this is all about reducing the surface area, so we're going to have less stomata. And the leaf rolling is going to mean that stomata are internalized, trapped 
within within the leaf itself, which means we've got humid air again reducing the concentration gradient between the leaf and the environment, so less transpiration is going to occur. We can see also some adaptations in the stems of some xerophytes. Some xerophytes, called succulents, will store water in the stems. And the final thing I guess we should talk about uh, are the roots of xerophytes. They've got an expansive shallow root structure and that's going to mean that even if you're in an environment with really little rainfall, you can get as much of that rain as possible absorbed into your roots. Now is probably a good opportunity to re-go back and have a little look at my, uh, my video about how water actually gets from the soil into the roots. Some xerophytes also have a really deep taproot, which extends down deep into the soil or into the substrate um, to absorb water from the water table, which is where the water will accumulate um, above a layer of impermeable uh, substrate. So one classic xerophyte is this guy. This is marum grass. We see this on sand dunes. And it's usually one of the first stages um, in a succession as well, which we'll talk about in another video. So marum grass exhibits loads of excellent adaptations, and here we can see a cross-section of a leaf under a microscope. We can see that stomata are sunken into pits. We can see that they've got the hairs to trap the humidity as well. And we can see that it's a rolled leaf. So this is a classic uh, xerophyte structure here. So moving on, we can look at how we measure the rate of transpiration. Um, and we use a piece of equipment called a potometer that looks a little bit like this. So it's a, it's a relatively simple piece of apparatus, and all we look at is how far an air bubble moves, and that tells us the volume of water that has been transpired through the plant. So we've got a reservoir of water and a valve uh, to reset the bubble position. Ooh, that should say a reservoir of water. Not sure why it doesn't. Sorry, guys. So this piece of equipment does have some limitations. It doesn't account for any water that's been used up in photosynthesis. It's got to be airtight and watertight to make sure that nothing's escaping. Um, and also, water is produced in respiration, and this, this sort of skews our results a little bit. It's also quite difficult to compare different species because you need to have you know, the same leaf surface area. And even, even then, it's quite difficult because they might have different number of stomata. So it's not a perfect piece of equipment by any means, but as long as you've got the idea that we move, we measure the movement of that air bubble and that tells us the volume of, uh, of um, water that's being transpired through the leaves. So because we would look at rate, we also need a unit of time. An examiner favourite question is to ask you what measurements you need to take to work out the rate of transpiration. Um, you would need how far the bubble moves, which is the volume, which is marked on the actual piece of apparatus, and a unit of time. Sometimes they can be really horrible and ask you to calculate what you would need um, to calculate the volume of the bubble. And for that, you would also need the cross-sectional area of the capillary tube, which is a really difficult question to answer. Let's summarise this whole video. Transpiration is the evaporation of water from the leaves. Transpiration supplies water to the leaves and drives movement of the xylem. And we've got four factors affecting the rate of transpiration. That's temperature, humidity, wind speed, and light intensity. Another summary then. Xerophytes are the organisms, the plants that are adapted to live in arid conditions. Adaptations that we can see include sunken stomata, rolled leaves, and adaptations in terms of root structure. And we can estimate transpiration rate with a potometer. I hope this video was useful, guys. Don't forget to watch the rest of the videos in my series on transporting plants. But for the time being, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.